the excellent speech. Now I would like to introduce Mr. Raman, Advocate and Joint Secretary, SIC. He is a Master of Science graduate, MSc graduate in Computer Science and a Business Administration graduate from Annamalai University. He is also an LLB from SV University. He is an advocate and ethical hacker with over 25 plus years of experience in software development, embedded system, technical training and cyber security. He is the founder and CTO for Cayman and Zeus which specializes in cyber and criminal law, m and agreements, and contracts and IP. He has developed several applications, some of which include Omicron, artificial intelligence and machine learning engine, and on-track licensing and work permit tracking applications. Let's give him a round of applause for this. Please. He has conducted training programs in various organizations and educational institutions, some of which include LNT, Aerowave Technologies, MSMEs, and Indian Railways. M50 University, Abdul Rahman University, Karunia, GRD College, Rajalakshmi, and Tyaraja School of Management, and Lady Dog College, Madurai. Now I invite Mr. Raman to share his insights on technology and innovation. Over to you, sir. So I want to start about uh, technology and innovations in payment. But before doing that, based on the other speeches whichever I heard, I thought of sharing a few things before we get into the actual subject. Sam said, uh, the worst thing in uh, systems is remembering the passwords. It is fortunate or unfortunate, I handle closer to 250 passwords in my account. <laughs> okay. I run servers, I run uh, large application systems, I get one email account in every client where I go and I don't repeat the password. So, basically what I want to tell you is, the era is changing. We are uh, trying to adapt our old policies into the new world. If you want to live in this century, you need a different mindset compared to the old one. For example, about uh, 30 years or uh, 50 years before, the traffic was not this much. You can just cross the road anywhere. Today, if you want to cross, you have to find the zebra crossing. Otherwise, there is no guarantee for your life. About uh, 100 years back, we don't have this many electrical equipments. Today, we should know how to handle a plug. Without knowing it, we will not be able to charge your devices. So does today's era. Today, whether you like it or not, you are living in a life of a digital life. You may not like any of these digital things, but you cannot avoid digital things today. Digital is forced upon every one of us. Unfortunately, we are not taking much serious about us. So, one simple example I can tell you. How many of you read the manual comes with the product what you buy? Take it example as simple as your car or a bike or a mixi or a mobile phone for that matter. We don't read. We assume that we know how to use it. So, what we do is we end up getting into trouble. Then we will start doing the research. That is what is the present day scenario, especially finance and the online digital payments are concerned. About 30 years, 40 years before, you cannot do anything without a cash. Last week, I have been to Dubai, we are opening an office there. I completed my entire trip with 1200 rupees, that's all. I, I took that 1200 rupees in my wallet. When I came back, I have even 350 rupees left in my account. Everything was card. Everything was UPA payment. Right from auto wala to the visa payment, everything was only card. Whether you like it or not, the world is changing. So you have to have some knowledge about what are all these things, how this world is changing, how my financial transactions and interactions are changing, and you have to equip yourself, otherwise you will be left behind. All this is scam, whatever we are talking about, freezing, unfreezing, all those things happens because of only one reason. They don't know how to do. So simple, your account gets unnecessarily a credit. You go and inform the bank manager that it is an unnecessary credit. I don't want that money to be there. That will be reversed in no time. I have account with the Kotak Mahindra Bank. Any credit comes to me in my mobile itself, I can click the transaction, go into the details, I have an option to reverse the transaction. If you do this, 
why should your account is going to be free, frozen? Your account will never be frozen. Account is frozen because of only one reason. Some illegitimate money has come into your account and you have retained that money. So, people think you are also part of the crime. Obviously, they have to do something to prevent further crime. Many of us here talked about uh, I mean uh, uh, freezing only the portion of the amount or the money which is connected to that uh, particular transaction. But uh, think from a police uncle, what if you are a habitual offender? When one money has come to you from an offence, why can't I assume all the money is through that some other offence? Then I should only freeze the whole account. Of course, from the convenience point of view, it is good not to freeze the account. I am not denying on that, but it is not practically possible. So, there are lots of limitations associated to that. One option is understanding how the world can change for me. That is the best aspect. In fact, uh, everyone on this earth only wants that. The next best option is how I can suit for the world. That is in your hand, it is easy also to do that. If you follow all these rules and regulations by yourself, most of the time you may not get into trouble or getting out of the trouble would be more easier for you. So, this is the basic things I want to start in the beginning. Let us get into the actual technology part related to the payments system. So, in India, National Payments Corporation of India is the one which is governing the recent payment related activities here. Uh, we all know about UPI. UPI is Unified Payment Interface which we all know. So, I am here to throw a complete light on what are all the other options available with uh, National uh, Payment Corporation and how you can use those things for your benefit. So, let us start with UPI. UPI is basically a simple application. What it does is when you create a bank account, you will give your mobile number. That mobile number is used as a centralized platform for exchanging the payments actually. You can open any UPI app, you can select your bank, the system will automatically send a message, verify your mobile phone and then if you are, have an account with that branch, yeah, that, that bank, it will automatically connect that account with that mobile number, one account is closed. If you have five accounts, you can do it with all five banks, it all comes under one UPI app. Now, you can select one of your UPI app as a, one of your account as a primary account. When any payment comes, that will go into the primary, uh, primary account. When you make an expense or when you want to pay out, you have a chance to choose which account you want to use the payment to be sent to. This we are all using, which is the normal thing which we everyone know that actually. The next thing what we have is Rupay. Uh, we all know American uh, Express, Master, Visa, like that is actually India wanted to create its own payment gateway. So, it has created uh, something called a Rupay. Rupay is a payment <coughs> gateway mechanism available and it is uh, presently used in India, but soon we are expecting it would go worldwide also. You, you, your credit card or a debit card may be connected to that. That anything, whatever it is, Visa or MasterCard or Rupay, what it is, is it is basically a server mechanism in your payment card industry, when you use your card to swipe to pay somewhere, that machine will connect to this Rupee server. If it is a Rupee card, then it will validate your transaction. If you have sufficient fund in that, your transaction will be through. So, this could be either debit card transactions or credit card constructions. Both are same. There you have a limit. Here you have a already preloaded cash in your account. Then you have BHIM, that is Bharat Interface for Money which is the next step extension of your UPI, which can be created with a QR code. You can send money and receive money into that actually. This is the next one. So, we have one more thing called the NACH stands a National Automated Clearing House. This is basically to clear your checks. So, earlier, uh, sorry, not checks, ECS. When you give ECS in your bank account for some payment to somebody, a regular payment like you can pay your EB bill, you can pay your mobile bill, all those things through ECS, that is done through NACH. NACH is also part of National Payment Corporation. We have IMPS next. Uh, that is the most important thing which we are all every day using it in our life. It stands for Immediate Payment System. This is uh, uh, connecting to your bank account instead of bank account through the UPA gateway. The UPA gateway in turn will connect it to the bank. So, this opened up the Indian uh, payment gateway market to a great extent. Because earlier you can uh, you can withdraw your money only in your home branch first, then it got extended with the core banking where you can withdraw in any other branch. 
now upa and uh, imps has made this option open to you from anywhere to anywhere you can do the transactions actually that is what is imps is the imps is basically an extension of neft and rtgs uh, neft is national electronic fund transfer where it is a batch process so you go to the bank even you want to do an neft to somebody you fill up the form and submit the details they will put in all the details into the system that will go into a list that list is processed every 30 minutes that's what sir said so there is a gap of every 30 minutes you can say zero minute and 30 minutes on every minute it will happen that so you will be able to transfer fund anything goes more than two lakh later it was changed to four lakh i think so that is rtgs real-time gross settlement that is also a batch, batch process now neft is also 24 bar 7 but happens only once in 30 hour, 30 minutes rtgs also now 30 uh, 24 hours it happens every 30 minutes and then you have uh, star 99 hash you might not have even heard uh, have you heard something called ussd uh, universal sorry unstructured uh, supplementary data service data what it is is in your phone uh, you can press star hash zero six hash what you will get IMA. you get your imi number this is what is called ussd code so you have different ussd codes in india only mtnl is associated with any national payment corporation and doing only uts is doing this actually using your ussd code you will be able to send a command to the server that will be received by the mobile operator in the back end that is connected to your home account bank from there the data will be exchanged this is the next option then you have cts uh, that is a chunk check truncation system earlier we used to have a magnetic coded checks now it is completely replaced with this earlier uh, one check realization would take generally two working days or three working days now it is uh, changed to 24 hours or 48 hours maximum actually within that it will be cleared because no more physical movement of a check from one branch to another branch at all along with this cts checks are scanned and then sent so the process becomes even more easier then you have an important thing the national financial switch uh, this is basically the network which runs all your atm machines across the world so this ACM machines in India is connected to this national finance switch and when you this finance switch in turn connected to your bank account so you go to any ATM you put your card your data is sent to that ATM switch ATM switch in turn sends the data to the respective bank verifies it and then completes this data so the whole process is so simple you are able to withdraw from any ATM machine it was not the case some time back then you have other enabled payment systems uh, this is enabled my basically for micro ATM process micro ATM is an another concept we all know that uh, pass systems uh, you in the in the shop you can see a machine where you can play uh, swipe your card and pay for them actually so the government thought why to make use of that only as a receipt of a payment it can be used for issue of a payment also so that is what is called micro ATM is in many shops today you can go swipe your debit card or a credit card they will give you cash back so this process is called micro ATM so this is enabled with the other payment systems and you have beam other beam other is basically your beam system along with other authentication that's the next one and you have e rupee uh, e rupee is kind of a one-time voucher even you want to get any kind of a reward or something like that that is also supported by national payment corporation you can you can send create a voucher and give it to people that voucher can be redeemed as a money so that is for one time payment and you have auto payment options especially for recurring payments in upa like your rental or your eb bill anything you want to pay recurring you will be able to use that now you have an ipo also available with upa if you want to subscribe for the shares with the national stock exchange you can use your upa id connected to that and then via IPO you will be able to make the payment and make the subscriptions and one more thing is UPI 123 pay that is very important this is a UPI solution for non smartphones we are those button phones you can use this UPI 123 to make a transactions you can do all the transactions whatever you do in this you can do it in that also then come the next one UPI light UPI light is for a transactions under 500 rupees which need not to be authenticated so there is no need for you to put a pin code for each transactions when you do that this is UPI light and uh, 
with the latest invention and artificial intelligence in picture you have a new concept called hello upi also hello upi is a completely voice oriented one you can dial a number it will make an ivr transactions actually you can talk to them in the local regional language it is under testing soon it will be launched so your entire payment is based on your voice other than this you have few other option one is credit card on upi so the upi you can link your credit card rupee your credit card can be linked to your upi also so your transactions can be done from your credit card but it is done through upi and you have credit line on upi that is the next one uh, you have app like light pay there are so many apps available where they will allocate your small credit amount on your upi account so without any bank linking you will be able to do that uh, transactions and the latest one is upi atm so now you don't need debit card to access your atm banks account actually it can generate a, the sbi has already launched it you select a upi operation you will get a qr code from your upi app scan that qr code and approve the payment then the machine will dispense the payment to you so no need for you to carry your <coughs> card also the the latest one which is recently coming up is called the upi one world upi one world is a prepaid instrument especially for foreigners who come to india so you can load money on that you need a passport and then it can be opened only by nri and other nationals actually it is not available for indians today it is like a prepaid mechanism where you will be able to load the money and use the regular upi mechanism to pay wherever you are going so this is what is currently available okay so these are all the things which is related to national payment corporations so after that two more new things which is necessary for you to understand in the modern world one is a cryptocurrency another one is a blockchain mechanism uh, let's understand what is what in a small nutshell so that you can learn how to use it actually a blockchain is basically for a computer certain things are wrong the basic difference between a human and uh, the system is <coughs> human can do random computer can never do random i can ask you somebody give me a random number you can throw a random number but a computer can never be programmed to create a random number there is a nothing called a random inside a computer really speaking so what we do is we try to associate some worlds certain concepts to create a random number inside the computer so the more the complex options you choose higher the randomization happens in real time otherwise a computer generates everything which is called a pseudo random number pseudo random number is basically a basic mathematical process through which it will be able to generate a random number but if you know what is that mathematical process is you will be able to guess the random number easily on a computer to avoid that we use the high level randomization options so that is where the uh, difficulties comes inside the picture so for example if i say a number 100 100 is created out of a multiplication of two numbers how many permutations we can create we can start with the 2 into 50 4 into 25 like that you will be able to create multiple combinations if i make that number instead of 100 a large large number let us say a billion now the billion can be created out of two numbers multiplication that the combinations the number of options would be very very high if I, try, if I start to create my own permutation combination to reach that possibility, it would take really, really long time. I am not talking about the time in terms of minutes or hours. It would take years for a computer to calculate such as big random numbers. So, the basic randomization process with an assumption that the processor cannot work beyond this limit, what we do is we create a random record that is called as one block. So, now a transaction starts with nothing the first most transaction is created with two random numbers and then it creates one multiplied number that is used to authenticate that particular transaction the number two number which is used to multiply to create that final number is unknown to anybody so the only possibility is you have to work out a permutation combination to find that concept which is not going to be practically possible now what we do is when the second transaction happens the second transaction is linked to the first transactions so here each transaction is called a block each block contains one random number that random number is created out of a multiplication of two random numbers which is which is per mathematically very very difficult for you to recreate it so that is how blockchain works this entire cryptocurrency technology uses this blockchain technology for its entire transaction 
there is one big difference between the normal currency and cryptocurrency in normal currency what we do is government to keep printing currencies that is the reason your currency gets devaluated over the time in cryptocurrency there is no concept of keep on printing currency while creating the currency itself they will predetermine the total number of currencies which is going to be in that particular coin take example a bitcoin if they decide that it is 100 coin for the life of this bitcoin it is going to be only 100 coins you can buy a fraction of 100 only you can only change that actually so since there is no new additions coming into the picture only one possibility is only that 100 coins can be owned by different people so movement can be tracked between the people in a normal bank account we track the person but in bitcoin the person is disassociated and only the numbers is stored inside the system so that is how the numeric uh, sorry new, uh, cryptocurrency works so digital currency what he said is one of that bitcoin is the other one so these are all the different uh, options available for you in the modern world so my uh, simple request is if you want to be on the technology keep learning the technology. I want to finish it with one small joke actually. One person was going from Chennai to Madurai on a train. So the train went in between, let's say Parambalur, it stopped for a crossing of an another train. The opposite side, he asked the TTE sir how long it will st stop here. He said it is waiting for the crossing, it would take some time. He saw one uh, liquor shop on the opposite side of the road. So he decided to go there, have some boost. When he come back, his train gone. The one which was coming from Chennai to Madurai was standing there. He got into the, his coach S3, he went and he went to the upper pit and he, he saw the person who is sitting below him and asked him, where are you going? He said, I am going to Madurai. He said, what a technology, upper berth goes to Chennai. <laughs> Lower berth goes to <laughs> Madurai. That can never happen in life. In technology, you have a limitations. Those limitations cannot be overcome by anybody. As Sir was saying, nothing comes free. No one works without a profit. If you get anything free, please understand that you are paying your life for that actually. Thank you very much. Thanks for your.